Assalamu alaikum. Hi everyone. Welcome back to Easy Human and TV channel. At first, I'd like to express my gratitude for selecting this video. Let's dive into today's content. Today, I discuss the tissue, difference between basic tissue and epithelial tissue, and some clinical anatomy related to epithelial tissue. At first, the definition of the tissue. Tissue means group or collection of similar cell and their intercellular substance that perform a particular function or functions. So there, there are four types of basic tissue present in our body, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue, nervous tissue. Epithelial tissue, cells number is large but amount of extracellular matrix is little. But connective tissue, cell number is less than the amount of extracellular matrix. This is epithelial tissue. You see the number of cell is more than the intercellular substance. This is connective tissue. You see number of the cell is less than the extracellular matrix. Nervous tissue. Nervous tissue is formed by the two type of cell, neuron and neuroglia. You have to remember the extracellular matrix is absent in nervous tissue. Muscular tissue. Muscular tissue is formed by the special type of cell, contactile cell. This cell has ability to contract and relax and it, this tissue contains moderate amount of extracellular matrix. So this is nervous tissue, this is neuron and this tiny um, bluish tag uh, dot is the neuroglia. So in nervous tissue there is a no extracellular matrix. So what is this? So this is actually the um, processes of the neuron and neuroglia. This is the muscular tissue, this is muscle cell and surrounding extracellular matrix. Organoid gland can be divided into two parts. Any organ of the body is divided into two parts, parenchyma and stroma. Stroma means connective tissue and parenchyma is formed by the cell which do the main function of the organ. So, this cell are the parenchyma and surrounding bluish area is the connective tissue or stroma. This is the cell, epithelial cell. This is muscle cell and in between bluish area, this is the connective tissue. So, the basic tissue is organized within the body like this. Now, epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue are composed of closely aggregated polyhedral cell with little extracellular matrix or substance. So these are the epithelial tissue. They are closely attached with each other and rest on basement membrane and it has an apical surface, lateral surface, and also a basal surface. So apical surface, there is a, some modification is observed. It's known as the cell surface modification. For example, this is mycophili, stereocilia, and the cilia. And this is lateral side of the epithelial tissue. There are also special structure is present. This is known as the junctional complex and the near the apical region, genula occludens, genula adherens, cap junction and desmosome. This type of junctional complex seen in the lateral surface of the epithelial tissue. In the basal surface, there is also some junctional complex observed, the hemidesmosome. 
The principal characteristic of the epithelium, it is avascular and it rests on basement membrane and cells are closely opposed and adhered to one another by the cell junction. Polarity, previously said it has apical region, two lateral region and basal region. Basal surface sets on the basement membrane. The function of the epithelium, covering and lining of the surface. So this is the cross section of the gastrointestinal tract. This is the lumen, this is the outer side. So inner side and outer side is covered by the covering epithelium. So the covering is the one of the function of the, it's give protection and it is one of the function of the epithelial tissue. This is the cell surface modification, uh, apical surface of the epithelium. This is the projection of the cytoplasm with cell membrane and internally present the acting filaments. This structure is known as the mycophili. It is responsible for the absorption. Secretion. Some epithelial tissue is able to secrete so it has also secretory function. For example, this is the goblet cell, it's secret mucus. Sensation. Some epithelial tissue are receive the sensory information. Contactability. This is the myopithelial cell and it can able to contact and it uh, can able to move secretion toward the particular pathway. Transport. The cell surface modification, this is cilia, ciliated columnar epithelium. Cilia is the one of the cell surface modification and this cilia can able to move and so it help transport of the fluid or materials. The classification of the epithelium. There are two types of epithelium present in our body, covering epithelium and glandular epithelium. Covering epithelium, you know, the, it's covered the external surface or internal lining of the cavities of the body. And glandular epithelium actually arises from the covering epithelium and sometimes it's connected with the covering epithelium, then it's known as the exocrine gland. Sometimes it's locks with connection with the covering epithelium, then it's known as the endocrine gland. And this epithelium is get specialization and able to produce secretion. So this is the covering epithelium. From this covering epithelium, this glandular epithelium is arises and it's lost with the connection with the covering epithelium. So this type of glandular epithelium is known as the endocrine gland. If there is a connection is present, this connected portion is known as the duct and the, um, this portion is known as the glandular portion. This type of gland known as the exocrine gland. So the covering epithelium is uh, start to proliferate and this extra cell is entered within the connective tissue and they are from gland. So this is the different type of gland. It has a duct and a secretory portion. If duct is one in number, this gland is known as the simple epithelium. Its ducts, duct is more than one, then compound gland is classify as compound gland. And according to the size of the, size and shape of the secretory portion, the name of the gland is occur. This, this is the tubular shape, so simple tubular gland. This is the tubular shape, but it's too, increase its length too much, so it's get coiling. So this is coiled tubular gland. This is branch tubular gland, and when this pattern we told 
the acinar. Sometimes is also tubular, some portion is tubular and some portion also acinar. So at that time it is known as the tubulo acinar. Some portion tubular, some portion acinar. So compound tubulo acinar gland. This is compound tubular gland and this is compound acinar gland. So this is the, this picture showing the development of the glandular epithelium or gland from the covering epithelium. You see, there is a mitotically cells are increased in number and enter within the connective tissue. When within the connective tissue, this connection is uh, persist, this portion of the covering epithelium known as the duct and this portion of the epithelium is change its behavior and start to secrete, secrete, and this secretion is passed through the duct to the site of origin. So this is the glandular portion, this is duct, this is exocrine gland, and these two type of gland is lost connection uh, from the covering epithelium, so its secretion is directly goes to the blood vessel, this type of gland is known as the endocrine gland. So this is a special type of endocrine gland, thyroid gland. Here the secretion is stored within the follicle and also from the follicle it's again entered with the cell and hormone is directly secret into the blood vessels. The classification of covering epithelium. There is a true logic is used here. Simple and stratified. Simple means when cells are arranged in a single layer, simple. When cells are arranged in a multiple layer, this is known as the stratified. Now you see the shape of the cell. Shape is squamous cell. This is keyboardal cell. This is columnar cell. So according to the shape of the cell, we can classify simple squamous epithelium, simple cuboidal epithelium, simple columnar epithelium. And this is stratified squamous epithelium, stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar. This is simple squamous epithelium from superior view. It look like this and when in cross section it look flattened cell uh, flat with flattened nuclei. So in histological slide this epithelial tissue is difficult to um, see because the only flattened nuclei sometimes is only observed the cytoplasm is so thin you can feel difficulty to uh, see the cytoplasm. Name of the simple squamous epithelium has different in different location. Uh, it's known as the endothelium in the lining of the blood vessel and lymph vessels. Endocardium in a lining of the heart. Mesothelium the lining of the peritoneum, pericardium and pleura. This is mesothelium. This is endothelium, inner lining of the blood vessel. This is endothelium from capillary. Simple cubital epithelium. You see the height and breadth of the cell is the same and centrally placed round nuclei. Simple columnar epithelium, the height is more than the breadth and oval nucleus basally place. So this is the columnar epithelium, you see oval shape basal nuclei. This is simple columnar epithelium with goblet cell. So these are the simple 
epithelium. These are the distribution and function of the simple epithelium. There is a, another type of simple epithelium known as the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium present in trachea, ductus deferens. It is known as the pseudostatified because it looks like a stratified epithelium, but it is single layer because all cells are attached with the basement membrane. Some cells are tall, some cells are short, but all cells are attached with the basement membrane. So it is a simple layer, but the level of the nuclei is different, so it looks like stratified. Like this, this is tall cell, this is short cell, but this is simple epithelium, but this is stratified epithelium. So this is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. So you see the, in the basal region, huge number of nuclei at the different level. So it's look like stratified look. But you see the apical cytoplasm is here and there is a cilia present. So all ciliated cell actually simple epithelium. This is the stratified columnar epithelium. You see the nuclei levels are different like pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. This is stratified epithelium, but this is not stratified epithelium, this is simple epithelium. Stratified squamous epithelium, this is, uh, in this epithelium, the surface cell are squamous, according to the shape of the surface cell, name of this epithelium is occur, stratified squamous epithelium. But the basal cell is low columnar, then cuboidal, and gradually it became squamous cell. There are two types of stratified squamous epithelium, keratinous, non-keratinous. Keratinous stratified squamous epithelium found in the dry surface contain keratin, a fibrous protein that provides protection against mechanical stress, water loss, and microbial infection. Surface cells are dead. You don't find any nucleated cell at the surface. The non keratin stratified squamous epithelium found in the wet surface and the surface cell are alive or nucleated. So you see, this is the surface layer. There is a no nucleated cell. This is the surface cell. You see, nucleated or live cell are present here. Nucleated cell. Stratified columnar epithelium. In stratified columnar epithelium, layers is two to three layers, and in the uh, basal uh, cell shape, usually cuboidal, but the surface cell is columnar. So according to the shape of the surface cell, its name occur stratified columnar epithelium. These are the example uh, location and function of the stratified squamous, cuboidal, columnar, and another special type of epithelium, transitional epithelium, found in ureter, urinary bladder, urethra. So this is the transitional epithelium. Its surface cell are dome shape. These are the basal cell and gradually cell size is increased and surface cell known as the dome shaped cell. It's distributed in the minor calyx, major calyx, and ureter, urinary bladder, and upper part of the urethra. Transitional epithelium uh, in the empty bladder and in distended bladder, these cells are became squamous. So in empty urinary bladder, the cell layer is more than the full bladder. Transitional epithelium prevent reabsorption of the urine. So there is a structural arrangement present here. One of the structural arrangement, tight junction. 
that cell the intercellular space between adjacent cells contribute to the impermeability of the epithelium preventing the diffusion of the urine and solute across the tissue the glycocalyx layer the surface of the transitional uh, epithelium cell is covered by a protective layer known as the glycocalyx this layer acts as a barrier help prevent the penetration of the substance including urine into the underlying tissue apical thick plate of the cell membrane is the another uh, important factor and some amount of mucus is produced from the transitional epithelium which provide lubrication and further aid in the prevention of the addition of the urine solute to the epithelial surface. The urinary bladder is developed from endoderm from urogenital sinus. This is cloaca and this cloaca is divided into uh, developed two structure rectum and the urinary bladder. So most of the part of the urinary bladder is derived from cloaca endodermal in origin but the only the trigon is developed from the absorbed mesonephric uh, derived, mesoderm derived wolfian duct. Uh, this is the cell membrane of the uh, dome shaped cell of the transitional epithelium and the apical plasma there you see there is a thick plate thin plate so what happened in empty uh, urinary bladder this thick and thin plate is fold and uh, this fold is present within the cell you see there is a vesicle present in the apical area of the dome shaped cell it is due to the invagination of the thick and thin plate like close umbrella when the urinary bladder is distended with the urine this infolding is flattened so you see the apical region of the dome shaped cell of the urinary bladder is free from vesicle so this is the open umbrella this is the close umbrella and due to this arrangement the dome shaped cell is converted into uh, the dome shaped cell is converted into squamous type of cell in distended urinary bladder now one of the important topic related to with the epithelial tissue the basal lamina versus basement membrane so this is the basal lamina electron microscopic picture you see and this is the special tin spin um, light microscopic figure and this bluish colored area is the basement membrane where the epithelial tissue basal surface is rest so what is the difference between basal lamina and basement membrane it is a layer of extracellular matrix found on the basal surface of the epithelial cell which is secreted by the epithelial cell it is visualized under electron microscope and composed of lamina densa and lamina lucida. The basement membrane is the thick, uh, thin, dense layer of the extracellular matrix that is like most human tissue following the supporting structure uh, for the epithelial tissue and separate different type of cells such as nerve and muscle. It can easily visible under light microscope and it's composed of lamina densa, lamina lucida and lamina reticularis. So you see this is the epithelial tissue, this is the basal surface, this is the hemidesmosome and you see this particular part is known as the lamina lucida, uh, look whitish and this is lamina densa blackish in electro microscopic picture and this particular area is known as the reticular lamina. So the above two from the basal lamina and all three is from the basement membrane. Composition of the basal lamina type 4 collagen, glycoprotein, laminin and antestexin and tectin and proteoglycans, perslacin parlicans and anchoring filament type 7 collagen. 
the function of the basal lamina based on basement membrane influences cell polarity and basement membrane regulates cell proliferation differentiation serve as an anchor for epithelial cell providing structural support and facilitate the attachment of the epithelial cell to the underlying connective tissue so uh, this for this plant this is are the this uh, sticks are the support like this the basement membrane is support for the epithelial tissue the basement membrane is a barrier to tumor cell metastasis separating the epithelium from the connective tissue and vascular endothelium remodeling or loss of the basement membrane is required for tumor cell to reach vessels thus allow for the access to distant organ you see this is the tumor cell it's break the basement membrane and it's enter within the blood vessel and it's affect the distal um, organs the third degree burn and basement membrane in the third degree burn which involved damage to the full thickness of the skin including the epidermis dermis and some underlying tissue the loss of the basement membrane is significant factor for the contribution to the failure of the epithelial tissue to grow and regenerate the basement membrane serve as an anchor for epithelial cell providing structural support and facilitate the attachment of the epithelial cell to the underlying connective tissue the basement membrane act as a guide for the migration of the epithelial cell during tissue repair it provide directional clue that help cell move in a organized manner during the regeneration process without the basement membrane the migration of the epithelial cell became less organized so this is all about epithelial tissue if you find this video is full please share this video please support my channel and thank you for watching